Erica, welcome. Hi, Hannah. How are you? <laughs> well, hi, everyone. Um, I am Hannah Schneider, and I'm so lucky today to be joined by Eric Vega, who is a Mexican composer based in Europe. And she wrote the music for Chrysalis Americas, which will premiere this Saturday. So, Erica, we'd just love to know a little bit more about you. Tell us where you're from, how you ended up in Europe, a little bit more. Yeah, so uh, I was born in Mexico, so I made my career as a violinist there. And at some point I decided to, to move to Europe and continue with my master's degree in, in composition. So I switch between violin and now composition and uh, I've been recently doing my PhD in Oxford so I've been working with uh, music and literature basically yeah so tell us about the chrysalis project um, tell us about a little bit about this music how it was inspired it's called the Snow Rite, right? So tell us also why you named it that. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me. It is a big pleasure to be part of your team. It's a, it's a great project. You know, it's like we've been struggling with our, <laughs> our projects and bringing music life. So it's been a, it's been a difficult year. So projects like this is like really, really uh, a big um, hope for, for us um, and especially this one because I really like to work with uh, visual narratives like image and dance. So it's something like I've been doing for the last three years. I already have experience like collaborating with some dancers and, and choreographers and it's something like really uh, inspiring to me. Like you know, create a new narratives based on the image or based on, on the movement is something like, I would like to, to keep the, the practice, yeah, further. Great. So I asked you to think about chrysalis as a sort of metaphor for hope, right? That we're stuck in this dark time just as the, the butterfly is stuck in its cocoon and then there's a transformation that happens and you kind of open up. Tell me a bit about your interpretation of that and how you turned that into music. I think it's the way we are uh, adapting and to the new resources that we've been experienced, right? So if we cannot go to the concert halls, it's like we, we have different tools right to approach and to bring music to 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 the audience so for me it's this kind of transformation and adaptation or from our work so at, at any point it gets like stuck because all the limitations we've been experienced is all the opposite it's like we are bringing new uh, new methodologies um, that in other time we couldn't do you know it's like something something new yeah yeah so you've got these incredible colors in your music uh, in this piece for example you wrote it for harp viola and violin yeah. but at various times they sound like totally different instruments how do you think about that how do you think about creating different worlds of sound you you really accomplish it in a very unique way thanks i think this time uh, it was a special approach right because we we were changing the instrumentation as we couldn't go to the recording uh, with an, an, an unusual ensemble right so we been like choosing like the instruments especially for this occasion and um, i like all, always to work like with different like new techniques for the instruments and I love to use harmonics and I think the images we brought at the beginning of our project it was like this idea of snow and white landscape and these uh, shades of white <laughs> so that makes me think in terms of music uh, in, in harmonics like definitely yeah, and 
shout out to the the musicians to uh violetta Suvini, alex grassica and bethany caswell because it's a beautiful piece but also very challenging <laughs> thank you yeah the, the musicians they did a great job because they couldn't uh, record the piece like together so they did it like separately right so yeah the first I one the, the first one went with a click track and had to imagine the other two instruments <laughs> yeah exactly so to record in a, in a covid safe way because we were doing this in the uk during lockdown um we had to record one instrument at a time which meant the first person goes with this click track or metronome and then the next yeah. person yeah person who went before them on a recording. Um, so Erica, you also composed in a really a clever way so that we could change the click track and make sure that everyone would, would Tell us a little bit about what other influences come into your music. Where do you get your inspiration? From other music, from nature, from literature? Hannah, I, I lost you for the last two sentences. Can you please? Uh, oh yeah. Where do you? Again? Yeah. Where do you get your inspiration, uh, or what are some other sources of influence? Whether it's uh, film, nature. Ah uh, yeah, I'm definitely very visual. So basically, from from painting. I, I get inspiration from from paintings, and in this time, I was thinking a lot about Snowstorm by Turner. And mm -hmm. think like, you know, it's like you, you don't have any clear image. So how can I say? It's not that you translate one color or one object into a sound, right? It is more uh, subjective, like the process. Yeah. Yeah. So what kinds of other projects have you been working on this year? Uh, this year, I, ha I got a commission from LA Phil and unfortunately the concert got canceled. It was last February and let's see if they can program again. So I have this piece for, it's for Sinfonietta and Org. And I have another um, string quartet for this year. But and somehow they are related to my research I'm doing in Oxford. So they are based in, in, in text and some literature. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your research. Okay, about my research is like I've been always interested like by music that's been inspired by any any book or any text or any poem. But especially in my research, I'm interested on, on the relationship that is being established through a, stru a structural point of view. It's not just from the inspiration. Um, so basically, uh, uh, the relation has been established by some, how can I say, from methodologies that come from the linguistic. Yeah, so I'm working with the phonetic and the syntax. Yeah, so I'm always translating like between both like music and and linguistic, like establishing the 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 analogies. Yeah, that can that can be helpful for any composer, you know, for the composition process. Yeah, fascinating. And yeah. does that bring you <laughs> songs, writing opera as well? No, but I, I I have in mind like the near f future, like hopefully to do some, yeah, <laughs> no chance. And I think everyone is but wondering, um, as as sort of artists and people who aren't artists, also, you know, what has this year been like for you? A little bit more personally, how, how have you gotten through it? <laughs> what have been some good things and some challenges? So many, so many challenges. But Hannah, I'm really curious to know because you've been working like on different projects, right? Not only ours. So is different like the process in in each of the of the videos? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we've got we've got six of them now. And I really can say that it's been it's been really different um, for each one, just depending on the personality of the choreographer and the composer and working styles. So we've had some um, where, you know, yours, for example, you and Stephanie talked a little bit about at the beginning about kind of the mood and the structure. And then you wrote something and it was done pretty much. Um, and then Stephanie <laughs> responded to that. Um, in another case, we had um, with Russia, for example, we had Sander Parrish and Tom Kaur, who were in pretty close contact through most of the composition. Um, he would send drafts to Zander. Zander would say, this is great, but can we have something with a little bit more beat in this place? Or what about something more sad in this place? And so there was a lot of dialogue in that one. Um, yeah, with New Zealand, it was kind of the opposite process where the dance ended up being done before the music. So the, the dance was filmed and then sent to Ayana, who worked with it basically as a the dance as a found ob object and then adapted her music to that um so it's okay. really been a journey with each one so it's like very unique for each one right yeah i think because all of you are so unique <laughs> so <laughs> different working processes and different ideas about how um how they want to interact artistically yeah 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 i think in in ours, it was like at the beginning we had this uh, correspondence between the images and the e ideas we want to bring to our project. But when I was composing the music, like we didn't have an active conversation between Stephanie and, and me because um, I basically got inspiration from her work, not this, not this one specifically, right? So I, I saw her as a, an, as a big entity, right? So that was like kind of uh, inspiration for me, let's say. Yeah, and I think that to, 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 to know her through her work, yeah, basically. And, yeah. and I think that's fit so naturally together. Um, that she was really she she spoke we um, spoke on Instagram on Tuesday and she spoke about how mm -hmm. in your music she found these areas of smallness and largeness of sort of closing in and also expanse and um, that works so well in her practice in her work because she's so great at finding these intimate images and also these really broad philosophical ideas so yeah great to see you two come together and and create something that complemented each other so well yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is also very interesting, like the, the outcome of this uh, collaboration, because I don't see the result as a new uh, as a new piece of dance, right? It's, it's a new entity, right? It's some digital work that is, is done uh, by with a purpose to be cinematic, right? So it's, <laughs> it's meant to be watched on, an, on a screen, right? So it has this new entity that we, we as a composer or artist, we have to be conscious about. So it's not a live thing that lasts like for an hour or a long concert. So the treatment should be, should be different and we should also adapt to this new idea. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's a great point to ask you then. <laughs> what advice you might have for young composers or even your peers who are going through this difficult year together? Oh, just to keep going, not, not to give up just because so many projects have been cancelled for everybody. It's like, uh, I am confident like new generations, they work with technology uh, better than, <laughs> than me or, or my uh, mates, right? It's like they, they are embracing like new uh, technologies and new software and new ways to create music. So I'm sure there will be a very interesting, um, let's say, when you see in retrospective all the things that have been creating through this period, I'm sure it's going to be something like really uh, innovative and interesting. Yeah, in terms of music language. So right now, because we are like kind of in the middle, we cannot be aware of these uh, 
change, but I'm sure like in five years, when we look back, it's gonna be something very, very, very innovative, yeah. <laughs> That's a that's a great way to look at it and also a great outcome of the project that we wanted to show that there's there's hope on the other side of this and even in the middle of it. So yeah, thank you for sharing that perspective. And I'm really excited yeah. for everyone's music and see the, the new entity, as you've called it, on Saturday. So that <laughs> um, three PM EST on Saturday, four PM in the UK, five PM in you're in Brussels, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. And thank you, Hannah, for gathering all those fantastic uh, musicians and dancers and choreographers. It's something uh, really, really unique nowadays. Yeah. It's been a joy. And oh, before I sign off, I'll say I think all of those times were wrong, actually, except for EST. So look at the look at the Facebook <laughs> and you'll see the right times for Saturday. Um, but uh, oh, yeah. And I also wanted to do a shout out before we before we end that, you know, the the ones who really put the, the creative spin on the new entity as well as of course um, Four Eyes Productions and the, the camera team in the UK that they've done such a great job thinking about how to integrate the musicians in a visual way, um, yeah. especially for, for this one, for this project. Um, Erica, they really found a way to yeah. show yeah. you music in a visual way. Yeah, definitely. It's like can can wait to see what others also been doing <laughs> because at the end we we will i think we will all talk about our experiences and we can compare just um to learn about the the other processes right it's not just ours because for the moment we, we just been focused in our project but i'm sure like we can learn from all the rest yeah Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Erica, and um, we'll see everyone hopefully online on Saturday. Thank you, Hannah. Um, yeah, can't wait. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.